What is going on everyone? Welcome back into Road Graders with Cole Jackson. Today we're going to be taking a look at Salah, a player that I was really hyped to see in the preseason. Uh, we're going to take a look at just his pass protection for today's video. I might do a part two on his run blocking, um, but when we're looking at how he performed, I didn't have any major issues with his run blocking. There's some things he needs to fix, um, but he was much better in that regard. It was his pass protection that was it was really bad. And so I want to really focus this video on what were the problems and how can we fix them? And so I think you guys are going to find it interesting. A lot of the ways he loses over and over again throughout these clips is the same way. Um, and so it's really an issue of the angles he takes in pass protection and the way he didn't protect his post foot or his inside foot and his poor hand placement. So on one hand, really easy to identify the problem. I have no doubt the coaches are doing it. But on the other hand, like, you know, I say that and it's easy to fix a problem once you've identified it. But the fact that it kind of kept happening makes me a little nervous, like kind of speaks to some awareness issues. Um, so let's get into it. Just a little terminology note before we really get into it. So when I'm saying kick step or um, kick step or kick foot, I'm referring to his outside foot. So the one that's tapping here. If I'm saying his post foot, it's his inside foot. So just kind of terminology throughout this video. Play the clip through and then we'll go back and take a look. So you're going to see him get swam there. This is that drop by Prochet in the end zone. Probably a touchdown if this doesn't happen. So we're going to see the commander's D lineman. So he's lined it up. He, he lined it. He's lined up as a four eye here. So he's just a little bit inside the tackle. He's going to rush straight up. So Salah's got to hit two kick steps here. And as he does, he turns his body slightly. And so when he does that, he, he kind of does a good job to get out to him, right? Like these are two pretty quick steps, pretty happy with that. But he has no leverage here on the inside. And so what that tells me is he kicked too far. And it's kind of better sometimes to just kick once and then force him to bend you outside because you have the leverage here. But once he takes a second kick step, he opens that inside um, lane and just absolutely swam so and there's a little bit of a lunge here too so we see them just a little bit of a lunge his hands completely miss um you'll see some clips of him in this video tonight where he's doing some outside hands and here he actually strikes inside which is good normally but you got to hit it i just think he got a little bit too deep and as he gets too deep in the pocket here once he gets attacked inside so there so what we'd like to so the question is what do we want to see so when that defender starts to bend you outside, I, want, I like how his helmet right now is on the inside. Like that's what I want because I want him to be able to have that leverage point. But as soon as he starts to make that inside move, you need to be ready to tap, tap, tap. And essentially, you're, the way you do it in pass pro, let's go back to a neutral position. So you're always going to go a little bit diagonally backwards, right? So that kick step is going diagonally backwards. When this foot is coming down you don't necessarily want it to flatten you want it to be more angled forward and so you're essentially creating a diagonal line and if I can ride that diagonal line then as someone tries to cut me inside and I diagonally step up I'm cutting them off right so you see those two lines intersecting sometimes you'll see it go flat it's okay if it flat if it's flat it's if it goes like this is where you start to have problems so you never want this foot to drop below this foot and you know, as we can see here, obviously, <laughs> it happened here. So there's him getting inside, getting attacked inside on his post step. Not good, really bad, didn't like it. Um, you know, let's move on to the next one. So here we have a play from Saturday against the Bucks. Looks almost the same. Nice recovery. It's Treadwell's touchdown here. Um, so let's kind of see what happens here. So we're going to, again, we're stepping back or deep. And then it's almost the exact same. It's almost as if 90 watched that game against the Commanders and said, I'm going to set him up. Again, we have a 4-I, right? And so he takes one. He actually gets better depth here. He gets better depth. But I think the problem is when this comes, so when this hand comes and the outside hand starting to come over, he's leaning and trying to hit a punch when... And you can kind of see it in his feet. Like his feet are flat, flat is fine, but you need to step with that foot. So it needs to be tap, tap, tap here. 
Instead, he's always leaning with his arms rather than moving his feet. So it's kind of this is basically getting beat the exact same way. I would say he he stays square better, and I don't think ninety bent him as outside as much. So it's not the exact same, but the concept's the same. Where he's gonna lean and lunge with his hands rather than keep moving his feet as he hits his punch, and that's really where the development needs to happen. It's his punch needs to land while his feet are still moving, and those your feet and your hands moving together um, in a rhythm. That's good pass protection. Now, let's credit him here. I, this is a good recovery. Catches him there. Close to a hold. Close to a hold. Didn't get called. Um, but nice little recovery to, you know, at least disrupt him. Um, so that part was nice. And so here we're going to see uh, an inside stunt. So you're going to get nine. Is that Joe Tryon? I think so. Anyway, and so you're going to see him kind of cut inside. Devin White's going to loop outside. Let's watch it fast. And so this is just, this is two things here. Like this is, he didn't protect that inside. This is just, he, what he, you can see him head up on White right here. Like I can see his eyes staring at Devin White. So he doesn't even see this until the last second. And even when he takes a step outside, it's because he's mirroring White. And he never sees that coming. So... Primarily an awareness problem, but also just not ready for that at all. Feet aren't ready. So as he's taking these, like, you can't stare down one player like that. Um, you need to be ready for stunts. These two need to communicate. Just not a good rep there. But this also against the first team. Um, you know, good good D-line there. Good front seven. <clears throat> Watch this next one through. Pretty much the same problem. So we're going to get a looper. So they're going to do, they're going to mug both A-gaps with the linebackers, and then they're going to loop him around. Or sorry, loop him around. There. And kind of the same problem, right? So he's, again, a four-eye technique. You guys are hearing me say the same thing over again. And like here, he tries to hit that post step, right? But his hand doesn't land really anywhere. So as I'm hitting, and this is what I mean, these his feet and hands need to work together. So as, where does he take the goal post in the way? So there's him taking the post step that I keep talking about. So he's flattening, right? And to his credit, one foot ahead, one foot back, not bad. But I need these hands, this hand, needs to go right in there into the old armpits when what happens is he basically leans with his shoulder like he's body checking him and so he has no hand placement here like he's shoulder leaning at this point and you kind of see that that his inside hand ends up looping the defender's outside hand which is the opposite of anything you'd ever want to see so <clears throat> as he hits this and you can see his lack of flexibility here right like he needs to be able to keep that butt low so that while he's doing this, he can keep moving. And then when he hits that hand up, he has leverage. He's high here. He's way too high. He's higher than the defender. He attacks that inside arm. So again, getting attacked on his post step, not hitting his hands at all. His feet move better, but his hands don't. And you're not going to be able to consistently play well if you're not doing both at the same time. And this is a sack he gives up that's just, again, so you can see his hands a little wild. Again, I would say his feet are moving a little bit better here. He's going to, you're going to get a slant from the D-line. So he ends up with, this would be basically, a, that's a five. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to end up with the five tech cutting inside because there's an edge player outside of him. So as the five tech comes inside, I like his footwork there. I think his, yeah, his foot drops a little bit, actually, so his feet are a little bit ugly here. Let's watch it a little faster. Yeah, he's, I like that he's using quick feet, but again, I want that line to be a little bit more diagonal. And as he does it, you can see his hands. So he gets up. He's standing up right here. His shoulders are way too high. He's got very little bend in his lower body so that once the contact point comes, that's one of his hands and the other hand's up here. So he doesn't hit any of his chest. That's a problem. And then he just gets driven back. 
So again, that's what I mean. Like they they kept attacking that inside foot. It's just a little bit different every time. But he needs to be lower. He needs to be able to create leverage at the contact point. And these hands, for the love of God, have to hit inside. You can't play outside hands if this is how you're playing. And then I think our last one, we get a little bit of a different look, um, a little bit of a different problem, but it shows another hand issue, which I think is going to be the primary issue he faces. So he's kind of doing that little chicken wing arm again. So his arm is like that rather than having his hands out and punching the chest pad. It's almost like his, it's almost like he's leaning with his forearm. And so you can kind of see it there. And then he just rips under with that outside hand right there and gets the sack. So that's the second sack he gave up. So, you know, I, this was a pretty quick video. Um, it only looks at his pass pro. And what I really want you guys to take away from this is kind of the way he loses every single time, right? So again, I think it's a positive that we can identify the problem. It's how's he going to develop? How is coach Joe D going to develop him? Um, is he going to be given the opportunity to develop? Does he even make the team? I know a lot of people are talking about um, how he might end up on IR. I think the worst thing that you could do to him is put him on IR because he can't practice. And this guy needs to be on the field. He needs to be playing. Um, so anyway, that's all I have for you guys. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. Hit subscribe if you're new here. And of course, drop a comment bo down below. What did you think of Salah? What did you think of this breakdown? Who else do you want to see preseason videos on? Keep them coming. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Peace out, everyone.